Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, first live daily show on YouTube on photography and all that. Hey, a um, couple of things. If you're new here, as you probably, if you if you're not new here, you know this. If you're new here, you don't. Scroll down. There will be a little time code link to go to the start of the actual show because we're going to do a little chit chat this morning while I try and figure out why I'm all tangled up here. Oh, excellent. Look at that. Wires coming out of my ear holes. That's unusual. Um, and uh, also, here's something new. I don't know if this is actually going to happen, but I have to say it for the editor. Click here to jump to the edited version of this show. Now, the, the deal is we're going to be trying something new. Um, I'm going to be working with an editor overseas. And I don't really expect it to happen this time, uh, at least not in a timely manner, but we're trying it. I'm going to be sending off a, down, a down-res version of the show file off to get edited and then back to me. And hopefully within 36 hours of the original broadcast, we can upload an edited sub 10 minute version. We're going to try it. We're going to see if this is something that I can make actually happen. So I had to say that because that's what the editor is going to be looking for. But if you don't, if, you, if there's nothing there, don't get excited. It's, you know, this is a test. Um, yeah, so good morning, everybody. Let's see what's going on in the chat room today. We've got Sheila, we've got Martin, and Martin's here just so Sully doesn't get cranky. That is very nice. You, Martin, and, <laughs> and Sully is recognizing. That is awesome. Sheila says, I'm glad for this topic. I've been on the fence about buying the vlog, and I'll be able to do color correction without a lot of time and a learning curve. Okay, so today's session isn't going to be about how to use vlog. This is just about how to install it, because it's a whole, it's like, Basically, I got Vlog, and I thought, I, I'm going to install it, and then I thought, wait, I should do this on the air. That's all this really is, so don't, don't get crazy excited about it. Um, and Sully says, this is the episode you've been waiting for. You love Vlog, but I'm just going to show you how to install it. Now you guys are making me feel bad, like I'm not really going to show you what you came here to see today. <laughs> Sorry. We'll do a session on that. We will. Um, and, well, let's get into that later. Okay, let's see here. Click and Tricks, or Click click Critic. Click Critic, that's what that says. It says, this is a first time actually live. Well, thank you, Click Critic, for tuning in. Uh, Jai Jai Gia, or Yay Yay Gia, or depending on what part of the world you're from, that's a J or a Y. Hi, hi, I lost my 5-axis IS after you earned, updated a firmware 1.1. Well, that sounds tragic. I hope I don't do that. That would be bad. Uh, reset your camera. That's always a good, safe bet. Do the factory reset in there. And the cool thing is you can save all your settings and then do a reset and then restore your settings and, um, and see what happens. So let's see here. Uh, Kevin Wright says, I spy a Noctocron. Are we going to get the lens firmware update too? So Kevin Wright, you might have been the one who made the comment. Someone commented that, uh, that there is a 1.2 update for the Noctocron. That there is a 1.2 on the Noctocron, but that's been around for a really long time because that's what I have on here. And we'll show you in the update page where you look to see what the updates are. But that's the version I'm already running. That's why it's on there. So there's no, no new update for that. Um, I put it on so that I could do a lens firmware update if there was, in fact, a firmware update for it. But there isn't, so I can't. But we'll get into that as well. Let's see here. Sharbeck says, you wish the YouTube editor was more full of features so people could easily collaborate on video editing with 4K support. Well, you know, wishes and... Dreams, what do they say about that? I know, YouTube's editor is like super basic, but at least you can trim at something. Look, what I really want is to be able to replace the file on YouTube, but YouTube doesn't seem to want to do that. OX Harp says, hi from the UK. Are you still going to give us your custom settings to learn from? Yeah, I am. Um, it's just, it's one of those, I don't want to, I don't want to share it until I'm really comfortable with it because I, every once in a while, I'm not going to say every time I shoot with the camera, but probably every few times I shoot, still I go, ooh, I should, I should adjust this. I should tweak that. And even though I've set it up, my custom settings, the way I've set it up, are set up for both stills and video. I haven't been shooting that much stills. And I know, I, yeah, I know. Um, so there might be settings that I need to tweak specifically for still shooting. So I will. But you know, in the meantime, just, just do what you got. And there's Griffin Hammond did a whole thing on setting up the GH5. And his is really going to be focused on filmmaking. So if you are interested in that, go just search Griffin Hammond GH5 setup, something like that, you'll find it. Uh, I haven't even watched it myself yet, but I'm sure it's great because he's super cool and knows his stuff. So I would check that out, but I will, I will share my settings file once I'm really confident that I'm, I'm happy with it. So yes, there is that. Andrew says, uh, nice one, didn't decide on buying Vlog yet, but you might after the show. Well, cool, but again, okay, sorry. Again, I'm not showing you how it works or anything. It's just, just how to install it. But we'll get to that part later. All right, shall we, uh, shall we get to the show? Lots of hellos, lots of people here live, and forgot to tune into the, oh no, I didn't forget, there we go. I can see how many people are here live, that's always exciting to see. Let's, uh, let's do this, so don't, rem don't, don't remember, and do forget. Strike that, reverse it. 
Don't forget, uh, if you want to get my attention, as some of you have already started doing, you type the at and photo Joseph in front of the chat window if you're here live, of course, and you will get, and I will get a little red thing that shows me that you're talking to me. And if you really, really, really want to get my attention and you want to help support the show, you know, like you learned something and you thought, wow, that was worth a nickel or two, then uh, there's that little super chat button. Click that guy and you can, uh, you can help support the show. And that's also a great way to ask a question because that pops up on my screen nice and big. All right. I think that's it. Shall we, uh, shall we do the same? Let's do the show. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on photo-related stuff on YouTube every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you aren't watching live, you should be and you could be. I like that should be and could be. I'm going to stick with that. It kind of works. It's fun because you get to participate in the chat and all that good stuff. Uh, so today's, today's show is all about how to do the firmware upgrade for, to vlog and actually the firmware update that the camera needs because just because the, what is it, 1.1, I think it was, because... Uh, because it's available, so why not? So we're going to be doing those updates today. This is not a session on what vlog is. I mean, I'm sure it'll come up a little bit, but we're not going to show how to edit in vlog or anything like that. This is just how to get the update onto your camera. So yeah, that's all that is. So I'm going to, um, let me see here. Let me pull up my, make sure my notes are all set and ready here, which I believe that they were and are. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 firmware. Yeah, that's, let's grab this URL and make sure I get the right one in here. Uh, yeah, that's it. Firmware update. Okay. So let me hide this window. You don't want to see that. And I will put the links to the uh, Chrome just. Who took over my computer? My computer just completely freaked out. That's kind of hard to do a show. There we go. Keyboard's back. Whew. Man, that's creepy when things just go. Uh, okay, we're back. Um, let me show you the firmware update page first. So I will put the URLs to these in the notes down below. I don't think I did that yet, but we'll, we'll put them in there. Um, so you know where to go, although you can find these pretty much anywhere on the internet. This is easy enough to find. So we're going to start with the firmware update. So this is a Panasonic.com webpage. It's the Consumer Lumix GH5 firmware update webpage. And you see there's ver version, firmware version 1.1. It tells you the release date. So you know that you're looking at the right thing. And if you scroll down here, you can see what it's got. So full HD 422 10-bit video recording and the anamorphic 43 mode 422 10-bit video recording. So this isn't a huge update. This is not the one that everybody's crazy, crazy waiting for. This is, um, this is a smaller update. But it's the first one. And it's going to update the same procedure no matter what's in it. So that's what we get to show you. Scroll down to the bottom of this, you'll see the firmware download page. This will take you to a generic page, on, again, on the Panasonic website, but that has, list, has listed all the recent firmware updates uh, for all the bodies and lenses. And it's interesting because there is more, like there was a GH4 firmware update, so I'm not quite sure why this is not fully up to date, but here's what matters. The DC GH5, that's the camera we're looking at. It tells you when it was updated there. So that other page is just an informational page. Um, and you can see here that that lens, the Noctocron is the HSO 43 right here. That's the Noctocron lens. It does not list an update for that. So this is, and I'm going to tell you right now, this procedure is really simple. But if you read every word on the website, which of course you should probably do, it seems like it takes like a year to do. It's like a page after page. Just it's it really is easy, which is kind of why I'm doing this video because it's, it's it's super easy to do. So we scroll down here to the bottom to the bottom. There's all these instructions of what you have to know and how you have to do and how you have to agree to everything. And then you go, fine, yes, I accept, I accept, I accept, I accept that I am downloading an update. And now you get to the real update page where you can actually download stuff. And now you can really see what is available in here. So um, here, let's see here. Where was that lens? Uh, what, what did I say it was? The, uh, the model numbers in these things it's, are very obscure. Um, it was an, there was an N in there. There we go, NSO43, see version 1.2. That is the current update that has been out since 2015. That is what's on my camera right now, on that lens right now. So there is nothing new from the Noctocron currently. Not to say there couldn't be something coming, but there isn't now. But of course, we're focusing on the GH5. Look at that, nice and bold. Now, click to the download page. Here's a little trick. You got to use Chrome. If you use Safari for this, I don't know why, but that pop-up never happens, at least in my experience. So just Chrome, top tip. If you're doing firmware updates, use Chrome. All right, so let's see here. Scroll down to here. This again tells you a little bit more about it, what's there, yada, yada. That's all interesting. Do you want to download your Windows or your Mac version? I'm on a Mac, so I click on the Z download button. And it's a big file. I mean, 64 megs, and it's, which isn't that big. Um, but honestly, the servers are a little on the slow side. <laughs> I just, I don't know why they just are. So we're going to let that download. In the meantime, let's talk about getting the camera prepped. So let me get this guy fired up. 
Another top tip, you do need to have a fully charged battery. Uh, if, if it doesn't have three bars on the battery, I think it'll just tell you, tell you you can't do it, which is a safety thing, right? You don't want the camera shutting down in the middle of a firmware update. Not that it takes anywhere near as long as it would take to run through a battery, but it's just one of those little things. So let's see here. I have sw I've hooked this up today so that instead of looking through digitally as we normally would, we're going to do a little over the shoulder on this because I expect that this screen might turn off at some point uh, during the update and then you wouldn't see the output and I don't want you to miss it. But first thing I want to do here is just check the current version that we have in here. So if I go up to the wrench menu and then you scroll down to page three or four, you see it says version display. Click on that and it tells you what version you're on. So this is the body is version 1.0 and there's that lens version 1.2. So that's how I know that I've got the, um, I've got the latest version on this Noctocron lens. And good morning, SMR Photogra Photography LLC. Lovely to see you here today. So that's how we know the version update is, uh, the versions that are on there, what versions are on there. Okay, this is done. So let's, uh, let's go back to this screen here and that is updated. Let's see here. Let's do a little show in Finder. And I'm just going to put this thing on the desktop, get rid of all this other credit. And we unzip this, and it's going to give us a .bin file. And so we know that the .bin file, that's what we're putting on. Don't, it looks like a zip file. Don't double click it to zip it again. That's the file that we want, the .bin right there. All right, now we can, uh, at the bottom of this window here, you'll see there's an instruction under the download that says click here for the, uh-oh, um, uh we appear to be losing we may be losing our signal. That would be bad. Ryan, we appear to be losing signal. I'm seeing bad things happening here. That's why we recorded backup as well. Um, OK, this was not written in English. <laughs> click here to the procedure for update. It just means click there to get the update procedure. Just, you know, details, uh, details, details. I am going to hold off for a second because, Ryan, are we really seeing that bad of a signal? I don't know what's going on out there. I'm seeing like bad things happening here. Ryan? I don't know. It's not checking It's backed up, back up going. We, uh, this could be bad. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, update in here. Yeah, we are having bandwidth issues uh, apparently. Oh, I'm back. People say I'm back. Still just bad quality here. We're going to hold off on this. Shows bad, yeah, shows bad quality here. Nothing out there, Ryan? Nothing out here. Backups off? Yeah, backups off. Nothing's uploading here, hmm. Well, people are saying I'm good, so I'm gonna, oh, there, now it came back to good. Okay, good. All right, there we go. We are back. <sighs> Live. Okay, uh, so back to this page. Get rid of this keyboard. You'll see it says uh, click here to the procedure for update. So take that for what you will. This takes you to the procedure for update. And now there is a big old long honkin' hokin' instructions to do. And it's continue to step two and so on. But basically what this is saying is format your memory card and insert it into there and copy the file to the root file. So Let's do that. First step, format your card. Just do it. I don't care if you, you know, you reformatted it last week. And just reformat your card. Get to, just do it. All right, so let's go back to this view. Uh, where are we? Remote camera. Wake that guy up. We're going to go into here and go to the wrench and scroll down to format. And there's only a picture in slot one. Click on the yes. And we format that through. And away we go. <laughs> Ryan, you're going to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> okay, so that is done. Now let's go ahead and pop out yonder card. And this is just an old four gig. You don't have to have a top of line card or anything to do this, just a card. Pop that into the computer. And let's go back to the Mac. And you can see on here, even though it's got Windows screenshots, it's showing you basically you're copying this thing to the root level. Okay, uh, oops, wrong one. Lumix, there it is, root level, it's the bin file I want to put on there, so copy that on, and that is it. So now that we've copied on there, it says continue to step two. Let's see here, there's a few ones. Uh, we want to do this one, G-series camera. Continue to step two, procedure four to update the camera body. There we go, so we click on that. And it tells you about the you know available, make sure you got the battery update and so on. And pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, you insert the memory card. Let's zoom in on this right here. Insert the memory card, turn on the power switch, press play, 
and then you should see a what's please wait and then a whole and then it'll just walk you through the rest of it from there so really really straightforward uh, let's see that is done copying so let's pop that guy out of there and I think it's time to scroll up through the comments and see what's been going on in there as soon as this card ejects eject is it gonna eject it's not gonna eject card there it goes now she's ejected all right let me just see what's going on in the comments here since we had all this rigmarole running around any at photo joseph's on there um safari's pop-up blocker i've disabled the pop-up blocker martin it still didn't work um uh, let's see here uh, you wow Charbex hopes i'm oh i'm not gonna break it i think you said you're hoping i was gonna break it yeah let's hope i don't break my gh5 that would be bad <laughs> maybe that's why sean's tuned in <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else is going on? Uh, yep, yeah, talking about losing me, but I'm back. And episode of Photo Moments looks like some hacker is trolling the show. Uh oh. Um, okay, Ryan, you know what to do. It's a beautiful thing about having someone monitoring the chat. If someone gets ugly, they just go cut them off. All right, let's do this thing. So, card, camera, insert card. Let's switch back to remote camera. Card is in place, and I'm going to hit play. No valid picture to play. Actually, you know, I didn't turn it off and back on. Let's do that. Let's turn it off and turn it back on and hit play. There we go. Got to power cycle it. Top tip, power cycle it. Perfect. Body, start version up. I love it. Start version up. Hit yes and version up ongoing. Do not operate any of the buttons on the camera. So that basically means no touchy. Do not touch the camera. This is the time when you don't touch the camera. That's actually going pretty quick. Uh, let's go back to that. You see the progress bar going by. Lovely, lovely. There we go. All right, we're going to let that keep going. So let's see, while that's upgrading, see if any other comments come in. Oh, hello from Madrid. Buenos dias. That is awesome. Uh, any specific date for the 400 megabit update? Uh, no dates. There's no dates on future updates of any site type or sort. They're just, you know, future. I think fall or ish, I think is what was said. I don't remember what was originally said, but um, no dates. So hopefully it's good. Uh, well, that's it. It's done. It has rebooted. It has, uh, I guess it's done. So now we can click on there and do the, let's go check the version update, or the version number. So we go back to, back to, where were, did I just go past it? Nope, there it is. Version display, body firmware 1.1, and that's all there is to it. So the, the firmware update is super easy. And the same, it's the exact same procedure for the lens. You copy the file to the root level of the card, stick it in there. It goes, oh, this is a lens update. And off you go. Um, you can't, if you have a bunch of lenses to update, unfortunately, you can't just copy all the files to the card at once. It, I tried it, it just, it, don't do it. Um, you just gotta do it one at a time. So it can take a little bit of time if you've got a bunch of lenses to do, but um, you know, it's worth the wait. Okay, so that's that. Now we get to do the really fun one, the vlog update. So uh, let's see, let me clear up this, let me get rid of, we don't need that window, don't need that window, don't need that window. And we don't need that window, and we don't need that window. Okay, so this next, let me get rid of these files as well. We'll just get rid of these updates. We don't need any of those. All right, so this web page, again, I will put this in the show notes as well. It's uh, another Panasonic web page, how to activate purchased function of Lumix. That would be the, uh, the vlog upgrade. So here's, normally when you buy the vlog upgrade, here's what happens. No commentary whatsoever on the procedure for this. I'm just telling you the way it is. You order it like you would buy anything else, like a camera lens or anything else. You buy it from B&H or anywhere you want. And in fact, the best place to buy it, who actually has it in stock, is our friends at uh, for camera, what was it, camera one? What are they called? Oh my God. Right here, we're gonna link to the video, watch their video, they'll tell you where to go to get it. And they have it in stock, at least they did a week ago. Um, what happens is you buy it and then you get a package in the mail with a serial number on it. Do not ask me why it works this way. It just does. Um, however, I did not have to go through that because being represented, or being, yeah, represented by Panasonic, they just sent me the number. So I don't. I, I would imagine this number is kind of like a secret. So I'm not going to show you the number, but I'm going to share the process, and then I'm going to hide the screen while I actually enter the number, and we go from there. But um, we go to this page here. It says how to activate purchase function Lumix, and here it is down here. Please select a purchased product, and that would be that would be this guy. That would be this guy right here. This, ah. D S D F, come back here. D M W S F U, whatever. We just click on it. And it gives us instructions. Nice, simple instructions. Um, it, operate camera to save serial code of camera as a file onto the SD card and upload it to its website. So here's what has to happen. And this is part of this whole procedure. You need to enter the serial number of your camera into here. I actually don't know if you can just type it in or if you could create the file, but it doesn't matter. The camera is designed to create that file for you. So essentially, we're going to save the serial number to a text file on the memory card, which I'm about to reformat. It's going to start clean. 
And we upload that file to their website along with the serial number, and then it spits something back, which we then copy on. I know, it's a little roundabout, but this is how it works. So let's uh, let's go back to the camera. I am going to, let's go to the remote camera here. I'm going to, once again, reformat the card. Format, slot one, and wipe that guy out. And then, and then, and then, there we go. And then we go into here and, uh, let's see here, it is under this as well, I believe. Uh, is version update, activate. That's what we're looking for, the activate menu. And the first option is export serial codes. That's what we need to do first. So we hit that and we hit start processing, yes. And it's completed, that was quick. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the camera and I will pop out the card, stick this thing back in my computer. And I am assuming, because I haven't done this yet, I'm assuming that I will get a little serial number, let's go to here, uh, somewhere in here. Uh, there's the card somewhere in here. There it is, serial.lst. So it's buried, it's not at the root menu. And if I open this up, it's a LST file, God only knows. Doesn't matter, that's why we create it from the uh, from the camera. Okay, so next step, insert SD card in the camera, press menu, set up, activate, export serial code. We just did all that. Okay, so now find and select serial list in the SD card. It's saved in the folder, it tells you where it is. Look at that, it's all there. Press upload to register. Well, that'd be this. So now we have to go to path name, choose file. And let's just find this thing. We'll just drag that in like so. Come on. Okay, seriously, my trackpad, my whole mouse, my whole computer. There we go, and upload. And now it asks for the key code. So this is where I must enter the magic key code, which I am not going to show you just in case that is a dirty little secret or something. So just stand by while I uh, figure out where I put that thing. Oop, there it is, my code. Copy this. Oh, so here's the really crazy cool... Oh, don't tell me I'm not going to be able to paste this in. I'm not want to have to type this by hand. Um, oh, whew, it worked. Uh, here's the crazy thing about buying from... Sean, help me. Camera one, what are they called? The, the guys I did the video with. Um, you can... Oh, look, thank you. Ryan just linked to the video in there. Thanks, buddy. So they will take a picture of your code and email that to you. So you get your code immediately. You don't have to actually wait for it to show up in the mail. So you could be vlogging within an hour of an hour, like 10 minutes from now. Okay, uh, so let's see, I've put that in, it's all in. Um, I'm gonna click register. And okay, now I'll go back, Ooh, still shows the key code. Okay, well, I don't know if I should show the key code or not, so I'm not going to. So it's, now I'm on a page that says, save the activation code created by this website onto an SD card. Excellent. Now it is ready to, now it is ready for creating activation code. Please make sure that the SD card is inserted into PC or Mac, don't worry. Um, activation code is saved as active.lst in folder. Da, 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 da. It tells you that. Okay, click following save to SD card, then dialog box is popped up. <laughs> I love this English. Uh, click save to save active. You know what? It doesn't matter if you see my. I'm bored reading this. Um, uh, there we go. So we Kiko, we go click save to SD card, and it wants us to see. Oops, see look at that. See my thing is. There we go. Uh, downloaded it twice. Um, it downloads. Oh, look, it even takes me to a new little thing. Excellent. Insert SD card. That's nice. Let's get rid of this. Oh, look, there's the code again. Well, I think by this time I've used it, so it really doesn't matter. Um, insert SD card, and we have to copy the file to it. So let's go do that. Active list. Come here, you show in Finder. Eh, there we go. I'm going to copy that to my desktop again so I can close that. And uh, operate camera to import activation code from SD card. It didn't tell me support, didn't tell me where to put it because that was on the previous page before I hit download. That was handy. What if I could go back? Let's go back. It says, okay, activation code, that's active.lst. We want to put this in private, PANA GRP, into PAVC, into Lumix, and into ACTV. So that's where we're going to put it. So we're going to copy that into there. So same place that the serial number thing ended up. There she is. Okay. So let's uh, go forward. There we go. And now it says insert into camera. Okay, excellent. So let's eject this thing. And now we get the fun stuff. Now we get to do the major update. While we're waiting for this to eject, because it apparently takes a sweet time, let's see what image one. Thank you, Sheila. Image one is the camera store you want to go to. Um, again, we already linked it. I already linked it up there. Go there, watch their video, and uh, they'll tell you how to get the thing and get it sent to you right away. Uh, let's see here. Other comments. Let me go back, because it's been a while. Uh, where are we?
we on the comments? Here we go. Uh, Martin's talking to me and to Sean. Can I just say both of you inspired me to buy GH5? Yay, Martin. I was sold by the personal touch and love for a camera. Miss your interviews, Sean. There's like six hours of them. You can go back and watch them again. <laughs> Sean, trust me, does not want to come back on here again. It's like, seriously, how much can this guy talk? Uh, let's see here. Sheila confirming the image one. Thank you. Around the World says, can I delete the update file from the SD card after updating? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, once it's updated, just reformat the card, and then it's all back to, back to normal. Yeah, absolutely. You can update it. Uh, you can delete it. Kevin Wright says, my credit card number is a secret too, but they accepted that electronically. It's a weak excuse. I just don't, I just, we're not talking about that part of it. Adrian says, so small rig, oh, small rig GH5 cage arrived from China today, but still waiting for camera kit from February. Oh, so you got the cage, but not the camera. Might stick a photo of the camera in the frame and put it on display shelf. I think it's a great idea, Adrian. Uh, let's see, Adrian, are you, see, did you say you're where you are? Because um, image one has, has GH5s as well, just saying. Okay, let's see here. Can someone try to activate it before me? No, this is up to me. It's all on me. All right, let's do it. Uh, that is ejected. Let's, oh God, I, someone should tell me when I'm not on camera, because I'm talking and you're looking at the screen the whole time. I'm sorry. Camera out, card out, into camera. Let's go back to this. Uh, let's turn this on and press menu set, it says. So we press the menu set and then we go to this menu here, activate, and it says import activation code and we say start processing. Enable the function, turn power off and on again. All right, turn power off and turn power on again. And I, I, I guess that's it. Is that it? That's all there's to it? Like, really? Let's go look at my, let's go look at my uh, settings. Vlog L, look at that, down there at the bottom. Vlog L, there she is. So why can't I activate it? I suppose it depends on what, code, what recording mode I'm in. Um, but yeah, let's see if I go into, oops, that's not what I wanted. If I go into 4K60, so I have no idea why. Huh, I have no idea why I can't actually access it now. So that's something I'm gonna have to play with. Well, that's like a, well, it's there, but now I have to figure out how to turn it on. Let's see, does it summon anything else here? The purchase functions are activated after resetting the camera. Activate functions you purchased are not completed. Click exit to leave here um, or click restart to go back and start over again. Okay, we're done. So we can hit click exit and we're done with that. Um, that's how it's installed. God, that was like the simplest thing ever. So be creative in movie mode, man. Oh yeah, I'm not in creative movie mode. Look at that. I was in, camera got bumped. I was not in movie mode. So now, ba -da -da, there we go. There she is. So let's see what it looks like. Let's go in here and activate Vlog L. And of course, I got the lens cap on. I should probably take that off. And let's see if I can. See, now I'm all right. Now I'm feeling like I'm going to want to put up, um, hook up the LCD. But what can I point this at? I don't have anything in here to point this at. And this lens is way too. Let's see here. I just want to see what the color changes look like. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. I got my skull thing back, but this lens is probably not going to focus that closely. Let's see. I think I'm going to have to grab a different lens. Yeah, this lens does, does not. Okay, let me, uh, let's see here. I need, uh, Rob, to, uh, give me a second. Unplug my ears and grab a different lens. And... Do, 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 do. All right, this is just the 12 to 60. The Noctocron doesn't focus this closely, and I don't really have the... Um, Where's the button? I don't really have something far enough away to point this at. So there's that. Alrighty. Let's just get in nice and close to Mr. Skull Candy here. And let's get this guy out of the way. And let's give you a cable to look through. Let's see here. I'll take this from here. I can borrow you. Thank you very much. And put this, let's not get that in the shot. HDMI to there and it's already up. There we go. That, there you go. There's what the vlog looks like. You can see it says monitor vlog L and HDMI vlog L. So sending the HDMI out as well, which is good because that's what we're doing here. And let's see if I go back off a little bit. Back off a little bit. And just to show the difference between what it looks like, if we now go to something like Vivid, there's all your look built into the image. But if you go to that vlog L, it's a very flat looking file. Remember, it's all very flat looking because it has to be graded. And that, my friends, is the power of the vlog. Look at that's all it takes to update it. That's great. Everything went as planned. See, isn't that cool? That was easy. All right, let's see what else is going on in the comments. Um, 
seriously? I gotta, I, like, put things on Do Not Disturb. Um, anything else in the comments here? Someone asked for me to do a review of the SD cards. I saw that fly by, but Paul B, you gotta remember, you gotta put the at photo Joseph so I see it. You got lucky that I saw that going by. Um, I don't know if I'll do a review. That sounds really boring, honestly. Like, really boring. I can leave that to somebody else. I'll, if I hear recommendations, I'll let you know. But, um, and since they're, as far as I know, I could be wrong. And if, John, if you're still here, you can, clear, you can correct me. I don't think that Panasonic is making the next generation of cards for this. So it's, it's, they are third party cards. Otherwise, I would say, you know, obviously you could buy the Panasonic ones. Um, I can just tell you that I've always had great luck with Lexar cards and Sandisk cards. You know, buy, buy good cards, don't buy cheap cards. Um, but no, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not going to do a review of cards. That just sounds entirely too dull. Uh, let's see here. What else is going on? Uh, confirming me to be in creative mode. Sharbax is saying, can you color grade Vlog in LumaFusion at 4K60? Uh, oh, that's a good question. LumaFusion is the iOS app. I seriously doubt that, but that's a good question. I should totally try to bring that in. I mean, if you're going to shoot Vlog, you probably are shooting in 10-bit. Uh, that makes more sense, right? And I don't... I haven't tried loading 10-bit onto the iPad. That might be stretchy. <laughs> that might really be stretching it. But I will tell you what I am very excited to be playing with soon. Obviously, you can grade your 10-bit Vlog stuff in Final Cut, and there's a whole process for loading LUTs in and everything. I've never done it. Um, I, I know there's plugins and extra things. But as you probably heard from uh, NAB, uh, Blackmagic updated Resolve, or that's a beta for the update version 14, I think. And that has, the paid version has 10-bit support, has support for the 10-bit files out of here. And it, of course, is designed to do things like take in Vlog and put the LUTs in the gray. And it's just like, oh, that looks cool. So I am going to be playing with that. I haven't downloaded it yet. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do any big projects on the beta, but uh, I am looking forward to getting my hands on that and getting some time with it because it's, uh, it's pretty slick. I'm seeing the demos at NAB. That software is really looking nice. I definitely will miss the magnetic editor, though, magnetic timeline from Final Cut. I'm really hooked into that, but uh, but we'll see. You know, we'll we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's see. Here. Anything else coming on? Otherwise, that's basically it. I would tell you what tomorrow's show is yet, but I just realized as I was about to start this one that I haven't set up tomorrow's show yet, so I can't even tell you that. So sorry about that. But let's see. Here. What else can I show you guys today? Let's do. Let's do. Um, I don't know. What have we not talked about in a while? Here, I haven't. I haven't talked about this thing in a while. This thing in a while. Check this guy out. If you haven't seen this yet, head over to lynda.com. I've got a course on there, shooting in low light. Low light photography, this is super fun. We shot this out in the Nevada deserts at night, and uh, uh, it's a good course. It's, you can get a free 10-day trial. Actually, you know, I think they just got updated to even more than 10 days. I'd have to check, so you might get more than that, but my graphics is 10 days, so I'm going to stick with it. Photojoseph.com slash lynda, L-Y-N-D-A, will get you a 10-day free trial. And of course, if you're already a member, just type in photojoseph.com slash lynda low light, or just go to the Linda site and type in photojoseph and you'll find it as well. And then you can learn all about low light photography. And that, that course was shot largely, it was a mix, I think, of Canon and, um, and Lumix. Might have, might have even been Olympus, it was a while ago. Anyway, check it out, it's a fun course. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, Sharbex says, can you preview profiles and load your settings into your viewfinder while recording vlogs so you don't just look at great footage while filming? Yes, that is called um, the, the, the preview, the um, LUT, what is it called? Um, it's a LUT. You can load a LUT in. I, having just installed this, I don't have any LUTs to add in, but yes, you can, so you're previewing stuff looking nice and pretty. And I think, if I remember right, what you can do is you can have it, so you're previewing the, the look on your viewfinder here, output the non um, lutted is that a word the non lutted image to go into an external recorder so if you're going to record if you're going to pair this up with a, a ninja then you've got 10 bit you can do 4k 422 10 bit uh, prores vlog it's insane like this is so cool and you record that to your external recorder that's just mm, love it so much fun i am definitely going to be doing some work with that because i think it's just badass cool so we'll we'll be checking into that Okay. Oh, Sean's throwing in a few things in here. Sean is saying, uh, oh, I guess we're talking about future upgrades. What's coming in in future firmware updates, USB tethering, hybrid log gamma, 40 megabit, all intra 4K, 200 megabit, all intra 1080, all coming later this year. But again, no date. Um, and the, also saying the LUT files have to be loaded up from a .vlt file, .cube files will not read. So since I don't have any of those, anyway, listen to Sean. He knows what he's talking about. And that's it. Okay, Trevor's saying the lack of USB tethering is driving you bananas. Can't use this thing in the studio at all. I, yeah, I get it. Uh, tethering is great, and I look forward to getting it on here as well. 
Uh, Sharbex is using vlog is grading is grading really required? I like to have the vlog stuff is optional, but still have some kind of default profile or my loaded LUT is the default. I think that, uh, I don't know if you can record with the profile embedded in camera and record externally not embedded. You might be able to do that. Sean, maybe you can clarify that because I'm not, again, I just installed it. So I just, I don't know that much about it yet. Um, but I get what you're saying. The whole grading process can be a pain, but you want to have that backup. Certainly, if you're using software that has the capability to do the color grading, you can just load the LUT. So you don't have to go in and tweak every single file. You can just load a LUT. LUT, LUT stands for lookup table, by the way. So it maps the colors from this file to what you actually see on screen. And so you can have a LUT that you can just download when there's a bunch of them already for download for free. I'm sure you can buy some as well. And then, of course, you can create your own. And you can just load that on and be good to go. Uh, so, all right, Sean is saying the camera will not record the LUT applied video, will only record the vlog file. Okay, that's what I thought. So that makes that makes sense. So no matter what, when you're looking at an image here, if it looks clean and shiny and crispy, but you're in vlog, that's not what you're recording. You're recording the flat. Think of it like shooting raw. It's not shooting raw. That's not what I'm saying. But it's the same analogy where if you're shooting with a... Uh, if you're shooting in JPEG only and you've got some super saturated profile applied to it, that's what the final file looks like and there's nothing you can do about it. If you're shooting raw, you'll see the super saturated thing on screen, but then when you look at the file in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever, it looks flat and has to be graded. That's, that's kind of the analogy here. Again, it's vlog is not raw, but it's that same idea. It has to be graded. Otherwise, it's just going to look really flat and boring. Um, Let's see here. And Sean's saying LUTs are only a starting point. People rely way too much on LUTs and never go any further with their editing. It's a starting point. It's uh, I think it's an educational step. You can learn how things work, but then you, you know, if you're going to shoot vlog, this is not the kind of thing you shoot your, you don't shoot your vlog with vlog. Right? Put that on a t-shirt. Um, it's just it's too much work, right? This is not this is not designed for casual. Oh look, my family's day at the park. Put it into saturated, cool looking profile mode and go to town. But uh, if you're doing high level work, if you're doing stuff where you got extreme high dynamic range and you really want to capture those highlight, the sun, sunrise highlight bright spots in the clouds and the shadows in the fields and that sort of thing, Vlog is your friend. That's where you want to go. Uh, and the, oh yeah, thank you, Ryan. So Sheila, she was asking which Ninja to use, which Atomos Ninja to use. It's the new Ninja Inferno. That's the new one. That is the one that has been designed uh, not designed, but it really is made specifically for this camera. And at NAB, they're showing off the pairing of this. And it's a great thing, right? You've got, and I, I think I said yesterday that you use that external device to record 4K, uh, 422, and 10 bit. What you can do that internally as well. The 422 10-bit 60, that's what I hadn't elaborated on yesterday. And that's my fault. I'm just, my brain, I'm thinking 60p all the time now because that's like, I don't, if I have to back out of 60p, I mean, that's sad. I, I want to shoot everything in 60p. Uh, so if you want to do 422 10-bit vlog, well, forget the vlog, vlog even, 422 10-bit 4K 60p external recorder, add the vlog onto there, external recorder as well. And then, of course, by the external recorder, you've got ProRes, which is the other big advantage. So uh, no MPEG-4 file, which is what's recording internally. ProRes, minimal, no compression virtually. Look, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little ProRes story, and then I'm ending the show. I worked at Apple when we developed ProRes. And I stood on stage at shows like NAB and IBC showing side-by-side, split-screen, side-by-side, 444 uncompressed footage and then recompressed as ProRes, and then recompressed as ProRes LT, the light version. And was it there's ProRes 422, ProRes, I don't remember all the model numbers. Anyway, you on the higher end ProRes, you could not tell a difference. Absolutely 100% standing there an inch from the screen, looking at this huge thing, you couldn't tell the difference. So ProRes is, for all intents and purposes, other than maybe doing green screening type stuff, it is as good as 444. And I know someone's going to tell me I'm an idiot and that's totally wrong. But as far as what you're looking at on screen, it's phenomenal. So stick with ProRes. It's a good way to go. All right. I am going to bail out of here now. We have uh, chit-chatted on long enough. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. As always, if you are... Um, okay, one more question. Sheila's saying, is there a Mac machine that can deal with editing the GH5 high-res footage? Yeah, it's not. It's more the software than the Mac. It's, Premiere doesn't do it yet because I don't know what's going on with Adobe. Um, Final Cut does, although I was getting some reports, which I haven't verified yet, about Final Cut not reading the file if you had it set to different um, luminance ranges. So that I haven't looked into that at all, but there hasn't been a big thing about it, so I'm, I kind of doubt that's the issue. I think it was more a case of you just have to have a, a powerful enough Mac. And I know I put 10-bit files on my laptop and on my 
5K iMac, both of which are a couple years old, with Final Cut, and they've they've played. So um, I haven't done any hardcore editing, but they played. So they work. And just remember that it's not supported by QuickTime yet. So if you load in a 10-bit file, you can't just open it in QuickTime Player. It's not going to show up. Uh, but otherwise, Final Cut works. And then, of course, the new DaVinci, even the, the previous version of DaVinci Resolve did as well, but you had to have the paid version, right? 10-bit editing is only supported in the paid version, which is kind of fair. You know, I mean, come on. Okay. Now we're leaving. All right, guys, you remember the routine. Subscribe if you haven't. Thumbs up if you haven't already. Don't do that because that sucks. Um, but, you know, I get it. And that's it. I don't even know what tomorrow's show is, but we'll be back tomorrow and we'll do something fun. Take care of yourselves. See you later. Bye-bye.